I do a lot of retro gaming on this channel, and something I do a lot is to work with Raspberry Pis, and Raspberry Pis use micro SD cards. And there's some processes getting a stock image on a micro SD card so you can boot from it and get everything running. People always run into issues. So I've made this video as kind of the ultimate foolproof guide to getting an image, to getting it booted up on your Pi, to setting up your controls, and talk a lot about the common mistakes that people who are trying it for the first few times often make. So when you watch this video, I'm gonna save you a lot of heartache. It's like reading the instruction manual before starting an Ikea uh, build. That's exactly what this video is all about, is to get you from step one to finally done as fast as possible. So here we go, strap in. So my computer has a mic, uh, SD card slot, so I can just put it in there. I'm going micro SD to normal size SD. If you don't have that slot, you can get one of these little USB adapters. And as you see, it's got both a micro SD, can't really necessarily see it that well, but it does have a micro SD and a full size SD um, slot on it. And then you can just put it in any USB port on your computer. So here's all those software you may need. 7-Zip is going to take a compressed file and uncompress it for you. You might need to do that during this process, so I recommend just keeping it on your computer. It's a good program to have. If you just Google SD formatter, it should be the first one here, sdcard.org formatter. This is a really good program for formatting a micro SD card. Now you can easily do it within your Windows uh, operating system, but this one is a little better in my perspective because you can format it in all sorts of types and I have the best success with this. Then you have an option here. You can either get Win32 or you can get Etcher. They're both the same thing. Win32, you can get it from SourceForge. Etcher, you can get it straight from their website here. And uh, what these are is remember back in the day when you had to burn CDs, you needed a program. Well, same thing. This is just going to burn whatever software you download whether it be a pre-made image, a RetroPie image, um, any kind of Linux operating system, whatever it is you're putting on your SD card that needs to be bootable, this, these programs are gonna help set that up for you. Uh, I really have no preference. Uh, Win32 is a smaller si download size and smaller size on your computer, so that's an advantage in my mind. The other thing you might need to do is download a torrent. So a really good de torrent downloading program I like is Qbit Torrent, and uh, it's free download it, just when you're installing it, make sure you don't install any of the add-ons or anything, just normal. And some of you might be thinking like, oh, that's all illegal. No, it's not. There's lots of torrents you can get that are not illegal. Like for example, I have one here, and I'll show you how to do it in a moment. Um, but uh, you know, you click the um, BitTorrent, a little file opens, I wanna go and open it. I've already installed BitTorrent on my computer, and now it's probably downloading. So let's go to my Q BitTorrent, and there it is. As you can see, I'm now downloading this program. So um, no matter what image you're downloading, and, and this video is for everyone. I know some of you are probably downloading pre-made images, you know, RetroPie images, things like that. Um, you know, that's all up to you what you wanna download, but this process is the exact same. You just get the magnet link, you double click it. It should, once you install Q BitTorrent, it should just start downloading. You shouldn't have to mess with much. As you see, I'm getting decent speeds here, and the two gigabyte file is gonna be done in less than a few minutes. All right, now here is my SD card formatter. This is a really good program to start with. And all this does is you'll see I have, it's just gonna have my SD card. Just make sure it's right, like there's a 32 gigabyte SD card. The volume label doesn't really matter. That's just what it's gonna be called within your file explorer. Format, are you sure? And it's pretty quick. I just like formatting my SD cards like this. So now I have a blank SD card. Here it is, my boot drive. Our, our boot drive, 29.7 gigabytes. You lose a little bit of data. So here is a image I downloaded, and this one doesn't have any ROMs on it, but even if there was ROMs on it, that's a common question I get, which is, do I, do I download the, the base image first from RetroPie and then install this? No, 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 no. All these pre-made images, for the most part, already have RetroPie, so this so skip all that. You get to skip all that. You don't need to do any of that unless you're building it from scratch, in which case go get that base image, and that's the base image you're gonna use. But here we got one. So here's where 7-Zip comes in, uh, in, in handy. I can open it with 7-Zip. I can, uh, you know, 7-Zip open the archive, and there it is. Or I just like to right click and then do 7-Zip and just extract it right here. 
and then it'll just go ahead and extract the compressed file right here. When you're done extracting, you can just go ahead and delete the this if you want. I might keep it just to make sure it's working first. You know, maybe something went wrong when you were extracting. And depending on how big the file size is and how much it's compressed, that'll change, uh, you know, how long this is all going to take. So let's go ahead and fast forward until it's done. Okay, so it just finished. I now have my extracted file here. That was the RARD before. As you see, it's a much bigger file. It's now 10 gigabytes instead of 5. And uh, here's my two programs now. I formatted my SD card. So my SD card's ready. I got my file ready. The option between Etcher and Win32. I'll just show you how to do both. So on Etcher, we hit select. It opened up a new um, window. And here's our, here's our extracted dot img image file it's 10 gigabytes select our target now this is where we want to be careful like that's my eight terabyte external hard drive i definitely don't want to click that it's not even allowing me which is good but this is where some noobs make a mistake make sure you hit the right sd card because otherwise whatever was on the sd card is going to be corrupted now and then you're just going to hit flash you have some settings here validate right on success if you want to save some time you can turn that off I don't validate mine and they always turn out just fine. But the validation process can take a while, especially if this is a big image or you can leave it on. It's up to you. Then you're going to hit flash and it should just get started. I'm just going to go ahead or should it might ask you to allow the advice device. I said yes, it'll say starting and then you should actually see um, some specs here on the bottom in just a second. There you go. How fast it's going and how much time it's going to take about 12 minutes and it'll speed up see once it gets going 10 12 minutes so with win 32 you just go ahead and click this little folder make sure it's on the right device it is H you can always check over here my USB drive is H see how there's an H right here not the Z so just make sure you're on the H go ahead and click this folder so I went ahead and found that same uh, file and if you notice here win 32 doesn't even allow me to pick the RAR file you know it's already filtering that out for me so there's only one option here so that's what I want to write that's the file I want to write I want to write it to my H drive and then all you got to do now is write do not do read okay you want to do write you hit write are you sure you want to do this yes and just like with etcher it'll tell you how fast it's going and how long it's going to take about nine minutes just like etcher time wise they're going to be the exact same okay so both programs work just fine. That's how you write your image. At the end of all this, you're gonna go ahead and take your micro SD out of your computer, put it in your Raspberry Pi while the Raspberry Pi is off, and then turn on your Raspberry Pi. Another thing I wanted to talk about in this video that's a big noob mistake is going for these sponsored listings, these no name brand, these no brand name, you know, generic SD cards. Don't buy this, don't buy this, yes. Samsung Elo Select, great card. Sandus Ultra, great card. If you're a baller, you got some extra money, the Extreme, great card. You're gonna write images way faster. It's not necessary, but when you're doing this writing process, super nice. PNY Pro is good. I'm not a fan of the regular PNY. Samsung Pro, which is the upgraded version of the Evo, yeah, sure, go, with, go for it. So think about the brand names. SP is okay. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like that. Lexar's in. Eh, they're still not that great. Uh, Micro Center, I don't know. I haven't tried them. I haven't. This one looks really bad. Like, why are you going to spend all this, you know, save two or three dollars? You're going to get a card that has less data available on it. It could be a fake card, blah, blah, blah. So, A, look for name brands. Two, buy from a trusted source, Amazon. Don't do it from some random eBay seller from China or Hong Kong or something like that. Like, just be smart about it. You know, nowadays they're so cheap that why are you going to save two, three dollars to get junk? Okay, that's a huge new mistake. I'm sorry if I'm getting excited about this because it's just such. I get these comments all the time. It doesn't work. It didn't work. I don't have enough space. I'm like, well, which SC card did you buy? And they give me some brand like, oh, the Uber X10 cards. I'm like, what the hell kind of card is that? So, um, buy the right card. I'll link a video that I made to cards I liked. Another common error is when you first boot up your Pi with a brand new image, let it load. It's going to take up to five minutes to auto expand your micro SD card. Just let it sit there. All right. So when you're first configuring your controller, you're just going to hold down one of the buttons and here you go. D pad, fairly simple up, down, left, right on your D pad, start and select. I'm just going to hit start and select on the controller. 
pretty self-explanatory, the A, B, the X, and the Y. If you wanna switch those, because you like it switched, you could do that right here, just do the opposite. Even though it's telling you to give it a Y, you can put an X there. Shoulders, L1 and R2 are these top um, shoulders, not the triggers in the back. So I go left, right, left, right. So see that it skipped it on accident. We can go back with the D-pad uh, when this is all done and then we can fix it. So let's go ahead and go. So this is where a lot of people get it wrong. This is just when you click into the controller. Now, if you wanna skip that, you could just hold down A at any time. So left analog, up, down, left, right. And then right analog, up, down, left, right. I like to use select here. So here's where I can go back with my D-pad and see how my right trigger didn't register. Hit A, and then we do it. What if you don't want anything there? You can hit A, hold A down, and then it'll just say not defined, and you can skip it. So if you want to ever skip, for example, what if I don't have an analog, a right analog stick on your controller? You could just skip those by hold. When you go down to right analog over here, you can just go ahead and hold down A, hold down A, hold down A, hold down A, do select, and then enter. Does that make sense? So let me just make sure I did everything. Okay, see, I almost skipped this. Sometimes it takes a second. There you go. Okay, I'm done. So that's how you set up your controls. A couple other things you might wanna, um, if you ever wanna change your controls again, it's self-explanatory. You just hit start on your controller in emulation station, go down to configure input A and then say yes. That's also how you would configure second player's controller as well. Um, another thing you should know is sound settings over here to change the sound within the Raspberry Pi. And then over here within your image, you often have an options menu. This is a pre-done image, so there's a lot more scripts here, but this is where you can change the audio from going to your HDMI to a 3.5 um, port or many other things, download themes, download emulators, all sorts of things. Um, you connect your Wi-Fi here, set up Bluetooth devices here through the Bluetooth over here. All that stuff can be done here. The last thing I wanted to cover in this video was the um, how images only work for certain Raspberry Pi boards. If an image is meant for the Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, it might not work for the Raspberry Pi 3. If an image is meant for the Raspberry Pi 3, it usually works for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. So, um, you know, it's bad. the Raspberry 3B+, Plus is backwards compatible, but the Raspberry Pi 3 is not necessarily forwards compatible, it's usually, okay? Um, but I always ask questions and see what it says. Raspberry Pi 4 images are not um, backwards compatible or Raspberry Pi 3B are not for forward compatible. So it has to be specifically for the Raspberry Pi 4 if you're trying to do that. I'm not exactly sure with the Raspberry Pi 1 and 2. I honestly came into the scene back when there was only a 3. I've never even owned a Raspberry Pi 1 or 2. So I can't comment on that. I'm not sure which kernel they're running, but a Raspberry Pi 3 is still many, many years old. Um, and that's where a lot of these pre-made images are meant for. And then there's the Raspberry Pi W0, which also tends to be it's a standalone image for that particular board. But again, you can always double check with the image maker and just keep that in mind.